The outer fencing around the U.S. Capitol is coming down. For the first time in nearly three months, joggers, bicyclists and tourists are able to use some of the green space. New photos from inside the temporary overflow facilities in Texas just released. Project Veritas and Axios both show images of the crowded makeshift facilities. This comes as press continue to raise issue with a lack of access. And it seems former President Trump is going to return to social media. His advisor says it may be on a platform of his own. This comes as Trump makes a big endorsement. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. Let's kick off with the Capitol. The fencing around the nation's Capitol started coming down over the weekend. The fencing around the Capitol building itself will remain, but the outer fencing has come down. Some of the streets around the Capitol complex are also reopened to traffic. According to officials, the strings of razor wire on top of the fence is also coming down. This is due to there being no credible threat remaining, according to a memo. It's been nearly three months since the fence went up and drawn controversy for weeks from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. One Democrat congresswoman from D.C., Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton, even introduced a bill to prohibit federal funds from paying for a permanent fence around Capitol Hill. The fence currently costs about $1.2 million per week. Congressional leaders are currently discussing a new $2 billion plan to improve security around the Capitol. Now let's turn to another fence-sparking controversy, the southern border wall. The cost of the wall not being built is actually costing taxpayers millions per day. That's according to a Breitbart report, citing a senior Department of Homeland Security official. According to the official, each day construction equipment sits idle, costs taxpayers nearly $6 million. Speaking of the border, what's the situation like? Well, apparently it's hard to get access to find out. Award-winning photographer and journalist John Moore says there's a lack of transparency for the press. The Getty Images correspondent called it unprecedented, saying, quote, there's no modern precedent for a full physical ban on media access to CBP border operations. This comes after the Department of Homeland Security stated that Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas' trip to the border, including El Paso, Texas, will be closed to press due to privacy and COVID-19 precautions. Moore went on to say, quote, I respectfully ask U.S. Customs and Border Protection to stop blocking media access to their border operations, adding, I have photographed CBP under Bush, Obama and Trump, but now zero access is granted to media. These long lens images taken from the Mexican side. He went on to say the vast majority of river crossings by asylum seekers happen on federal land in South Texas, Rio Grande Valley. The federal government controls access to those areas. The Border Patrol has been removing journalists who enter, including recently myself, CBS, others. The White House press secretary has also faced questions regarding the lack of access. She responded by saying, quote, and we remain committed to transparency. I don't have an update for you on the timeline for access, but it is certainly something we support. Now, new footage by Project Veritas seems to give a glimpse into the actual situation there. The images show people wrapped up in what appears to be space blankets crowded together. James O'Keefe went there to investigate but was asked to leave. Even though he pointed out he was press, he was still asked to leave on the grounds he was trespassing on private property. He proceeded to point out that airspace isn't private and got into a jet and flew over the facility, giving an aerial view. According to recent reports, there are eight pods in these facilities. Project Veritas's James O'Keefe says these photos were taken in the last few days and claims 50 people were positive with the virus over the last few days. NTD was unable to independently verify these claims. Axios also obtained exclusive photos showing the overflow facilities in Texas. The images come from Texas Representative Henry Cuellar. He told Axios one pod held more than 400 unaccompanied male minors, adding the maximum number is supposed to be 260 people. He went on to say the pods provide, quote, terrible conditions for the children, adding these children should be moved to be housed and cared for by the Department of Health and Human Services. Cuellar told Axios that he didn't visit the facility himself, adding that the photos were provided to him as he attempts to raise awareness of the situation at the border. 
He went on to say CBP agents are, quote, doing the best they can under the circumstances, but are not equipped to care for kids and need help from the administration. He added, we have to stop kids and families from making the dangerous trek across Mexico to come to the United States. We have to work with Mexico and Central American countries to have them apply for asylum in their countries. Over the weekend, DHS head Alejandro Mayorkas said in a series of TV interviews, quote, we are expelling families, we are expelling single adults, and we've made a decision that we will not expel young, vulnerable children. I think we are executing on our plans. There's been a surge in illegal migrant crossings. Homeland Security head Alejandro Mayorkas said this year the U.S. is on pace to encounter more illegal immigrants crossing the border than any year in the past two decades. There's also been an increase in unaccompanied migrant children crossing over. President of the National Border Patrol Council Brandon Judd told Fox News last week the situation at the border qualifies as a crisis. But he defended Biden's policies, saying Biden's comments on ABC earlier last week, telling migrants not to come over, showed the president understands there is a crisis. Republicans say Biden's move to rescind Trump-era immigration policies essentially served as a welcome mat for legal immigrants. As President Biden has undone over 12 immigration policies that President Trump had put in place to curb illegal immigration. On his first day in office, Biden signed executive orders reversing several of the Trump administration's immigration policies. He says he wants to legalize 11 million illegal immigrants. Experts say Biden's immigration policies are attracting migrants and fueling a crisis. Biden says there isn't a crisis at the border. He says, quote, we will be able to handle it. According to CBP data, the number of illegal crossings at the southern border has been on the rise since October 2020. The number of arrests from October 2020 to January 2021 was nearly 300,000. That's a nearly 80 percent rise from the same period last year. In February, the CBP arrested over 100,000 people who crossed the southern border illegally. That number has almost tripled the arrest from the same month last year, when CBP caught almost 37,000 people. Many of those crossing now are unaccompanied minors. So where are all these migrants being kept? According to CBS, over the weekend, over 15,000 unaccompanied migrant children stayed in Border Patrol facilities not made for long-term custody. Under U.S. law, unaccompanied children cannot be kept for more than 72 hours. But government data seen by CBS seems to show most spend an average of 136 hours in custody. So to deal with the influx of migrants, the Biden administration has signed a multi-million dollar contract to house them in hotels. Acting ICE Director Ty Johnson says in a statement, the agency signed an $86.9 million contract with the nonprofit Endeavors for hotel rooms near the border. That's to supply short-term housing to migrant families not yet ousted from America and who are currently placed in immigration proceedings. According to Fox Business, the contract supplies over 1,200 beds and other necessary services, such as a comprehensive health assessment, including COVID-19 testing. Endeavor's president and CEO John Alman confirmed the contract with DHS to the outlet. And President Biden says he does plan to eventually visit the border. Biden said Sunday he plans to visit the U.S.-Mexico border sometime. Biden also said the administration is working on stemming the migrant flow. The U.S. faces a surge in illegal border crossings. It comes after Biden reversed several Trump-era immigration policies, including Trump's efforts to end the catch-and-release policy. The DHS secretary told NBC News on Sunday they are expelling families and single adults, but not children. On Sunday, Mallorca seemed to shift blame for the current crisis to the Trump administration. Trump appeared to respond, writing, quote, We proudly handed the Biden administration the most secure border in history. All they had to do was keep this smooth running system on autopilot. Trump also raised concerns about reviving catch and release. He writes, even someone of Mayorkas's limited abilities should understand that if you provide catch and release to the world's illegal aliens, then the whole world will come. Last month, Border Patrol apprehended over 100,000 illegal border crossers. That's almost triple the amount from the year before. 
Trump also called for an immediate congressional investigation over reports that the Biden administration is limiting the amount of information of what Border Patrol agents can share with the media about the ongoing crisis. He called it a gag order, saying the Mayorkas gag order on our nation's heroic border agents and ICE officers should be the subject of an immediate congressional investigation. But it is clear they are engaged in a huge cover-up to hide just how bad things truly are. The only way to end the Biden border crisis is for them to admit their total failure and adopt the profoundly effective proven Trump policies. The former president is known for his hardline stance on immigration and his support for border agents and ICE officers. Speaking of Trump, it seems he is set to return to social media. Trump spokesman Jason Miller told Fox News Trump will launch his own social media platform in two or three months. He calls it the hottest ticket in social media, saying it will completely redefine the game. Trump was well known for his tweets. Several social media companies silenced Trump following the breach of the Capitol on January 6th, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitch and Snapchat. Twitter also banned Trump in January. He had about 90 million followers at the time. It seems Trump will make his return by launching his own social media platform. Miller did not say what the name of the company will be, but he said a lot of companies have approached the former president to make it happen. Trump has not said whether he will return to other platforms conservatives favor, such as Gab, MeWe, or Parler. Last month, Trump speculated in an interview with Newsmax that Parler could not mechanically handle the number of users he would bring. And recently, Trump said he has not decided whether he will run for president in 2024. His first priority is to see what he can do with the House. The advisor said Trump will make endorsements for Republican challengers in the 2022 primaries. He said over 20 senators and 50 Congress members have called or visited Trump at Mar-a-Lago seeking his endorsement. One that Miller calls the most important political endorsement in world history. And the big endorsement seems to be a bid for Georgia Secretary of State. Representative Jody Heiss announced on Monday he was honored to have the endorsement of President Donald Trump. Heiss went after Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, saying his actions serve to create cracks in the integrity of our elections, which I wholeheartedly believe individuals took advantage of in 2020. Heiss went on to say our state deserves a leader who steers clear of scandals and focuses on the incredibly important duties of the office. If elected, my top priority will be ensuring every Georgian's legally cast ballot is counted in future elections. Trump has not said if he will run again in 2024, but he did say the Republican Party has a number of candidates who would be good choices. He went on to name Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, Senator Josh Hawley, Senator Ted Cruz, and Senator Rand Paul. His comments came on the podcast The Truth with Lisa Booth. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.